everybody, welcome back. Shane here with you from Guitar at Work. This is Rocky Mountain Way, what a great tune. I'm doing an acoustic version of it. Obviously it's on an electric guitar and there are several guitars going on in there, but uh, you can distill it down to a really cool uh, acoustic song to play around the campfire or wherever you might be playing. Um, first of all, thank you for subscribing. It's been a lot of fun watching those numbers go up. There'll be an opportunity to do that later on or you can do that anytime. Hit the subscribe button. It just tells you when other videos are coming. And there are sheets available for this guy, Rocky Mountain Way. Just head to shanesimpson.com, free of charge. Just look for that little button that says download guitar at work uh, song sheets and no hassle, nothing to sign up for. Uh, I'll be referring to the sheet constantly in videos so it will help you for sure. Uh, we start out with an E power chord here. And power chords might be new to some of us. I'm up here seventh fret of the A string, ninth fret of the D string, and ninth fret of the G string right there. You'll see those numbers written out on the top line of your sheet there. And that is a power chord. And I'm gonna play the open E string first. And then play the chord, only the notes that I have fingers on though. Watch out for that. I like to rest my right hand on the bridge just to get control of that right hand so that he won't uh, overshoot. And if he does, I can choke him out with just a little flick of the wrist there. So I'm gonna go power chord again. I'm gonna play the low E first. And then play your power chord twice. And then I'm gonna play the low E again. Now in the intro, you don't hear that low E going on, but it fills it up, it plays it all over the place in other spots. So I thought I'd throw it in just to keep it. If you're one person playing, it'll fill it up nicely. So here's low E, then your power chord twice. And then I'm gonna take a, a low E again, and then Pinky's gonna go up to the 11th fret. Now that's a bit of a stretch. We'll talk about how to get that going in a sec. And there's seven, uh, excuse me, yeah, seven and 11. And then your bass note again, and then back to seven and nine, just by releasing the Pinky. What the heck is that? Let's do that again slowly. I'm gonna get that power chord loaded up here. Bass note, two shots on the power chord. Bass note, so, uh, now pinky's going up to the 11th fret in the same string that the ring finger's on. And now hit your bass note again, and remove the pinky. Again, so in time you get. Again. Yeah, I'll do it super slowly. Here it is again, get a good close up of that. Here is your low E, played open. Here's your power chord shape, which is an E. And I'm gonna play the low E again. Pinky's gonna travel up to get that 11th fret. And then open E again, remove the pinky. And you, when you go to repeat that, then you put the pinky back on there. Now, if you're having trouble stretching, which I imagine a lot of us are, if your thumb, uh, if, if you can see me here, if your thumb, is like that. You're dooming your pinky. He just won't work. He won't be able to stretch. So watch out for that. You want that pinky, excuse me, that thumb right there, right in behind, uh, right in behind that space where your middle finger would be if he was on the neck, just like that. Uh, even leaning a little more forward than that is a good idea. It really helps to bring that pinky uh, to get him to stretch. And hopefully good pinky technique typically is a, a curl like that, good curl, as you see. And you, just, you don't want straight like that. That's just too hard to manage. So you get that wrist nice and low, right? Come in from underneath. Even a strap is a good idea if you can't get there. Watch out for resting your elbow on your leg. That'll really, um, that'll really mess you up. So you're getting both bow, bow, and wrist is low. Over you go to 11. Off he comes. And then pinky goes back on. Right here. Again. Bow, bow. Pinky off. And, and bow. Boom. There we go. So there's three or four ideas in this song that are worth chasing. And uh, that was the first one. That, that would continue, that guitar would continue, and the piano comes in and does this. Those, let's call those piano chords for now, okay? You will end up playing that, and here is, you're gonna see, it's a, called a D slash E. Check that chord diagram out. Second line there of your sheet. I've got the fourth fret here of the D string, second fret of the G string, third fret of the B string. Now I'm trying to X out, I'm trying to X out that high string just by leaning my first finger over. That shouldn't be too hard to do, it might be happening quite naturally. And I'm gonna play the low E and a down stroke, low E again, another down stroke, low E, hit that guy again, hit the bass again, and I'm gonna hit that chord and then drag it up two frets, exactly the same shape. Now that's just an E chord. You may not have seen that, but it's just an E chord and a different configuration than you might be used to. Let me back it up here. Here's that second section, or piano chords that are marked punches on your sheet. D slash E, you're gonna play the bass note first. Strum, bass, strum, bass, strum, bass, strum, and dragging them up two frets. There we go, and in time would be this. 
two, three, four again. Two, three, four. go so that's our second our second part you may have to stop tape right there and get those together I'll just uh, remind you we've got this so far with the power chord again one more now I'm gonna go to piano chords and do that and do those piano chords a bunch of times uh, the third idea is this, uh, this idea here, really standard in rock or blues, is it's an E power chord down here, going to an A power chord, we're just dropping that toward the floor, I'll do it again slowly in a sec, and then my middle finger is going to go grab this third fret of the low E, and then back to the chord we started on, which is an E. Yeah, so very slowly, you're seeing 0-2 written on, I'll call this verse section here. Your first finger is playing the second fret of the A string. It's okay if he's a little bit barred like that. It helps to protect if you overshoot with the right hand. So, boom. Now I'm gonna move that down one string toward the floor. And I'm gonna grab my middle finger here's third fret of the low E. And then back to the chord you started on, the E. There we go. Just watch out which strings you're selecting here with the right hand. You'll clearly see the open strings written as zeros in there. Um, it's counterintuitive. You've got your finger here on the second fret of the A string, and we're asking you to play the low E and the A. So your right hand might not cooperate right at first, if this is new to you. So here's an E again, E power chord. Here's your A. Now I put G in brackets, because this note here is a G, kind of implying the G chord, and then back to your, your low E. So in time we get... And he's going to put low E's. Bass player's in there doing that. Slowing it down. And the vocal's in there. Boom, 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 boom. Here it comes again. Boom, boom, boom. Couple more here. I'm just pedaling away on that low E string. And once in a while hitting, you know, the note your first finger's playing as well to make it a little thicker. Boom. And of singers on top of that. Um, there's a, a, toward the bottom of the sheet, you'll see A shuffle written. There's a little walk here. And they're walking into an A shuffle. That guy there. Uh, an A, first of all, the three is going to play the third fret of the low E, then the four, and that's walking you into that A shuffle bit. So A, uh, if a shuffle is new to you, look at I got second fret right there on the D string, and you're seeing a zero two written there. So I'm asking you to play that open A, and then the second fret on the D string. They're, they're played together because they're vertically aligned. We get this, two of those. Now you keep that first finger there. Your ring finger will go to the fourth fret of the very same string and play two of those. And you're always playing that open A string to fatten it up a bit. I'll go back here to the first finger. Fourth fret. Another one of those. Good. That little percent sign you might be seeing on your sheet is, uh, that means to repeat what has come before. Uh, on, a, on a handwritten sheet, you'll typically use that. So here's the A shuffle again with the walk just before it. And a walk. There we go. That's an A shuffle. Now to an E shuffle, just bringing that all one string thicker, one string down toward the floor, and it's this guy. That's your E shuffle. Yeah, they're gonna go back to an A shuffle right here. And now we're gonna go to a B. The B is, I'll do a power chord right here, second fret, A string. 4th fret D string and 4th fret uh, G string. So here we go. And they're just going to build on that. I've drawn a bunch of slashes there. If we get this. A one, two, three, four, and we're back to... Do that piano chord thing. Here we go. I'll take it from the shuffly bit, right from the start of that section. Here's an A coming. Three, four, uh, walking A. Back to an A here. And a B building up here and one, two, three, we're back to. There we go, two, three, four. 
go, and round and around. I think you will clearly hear the parts in there. So I haven't done a sheet that has the lyrics and all that up there. I guess I should at some point, but those are your parts. And I'll just in very, very quick review. You've got this guy here in the intro. And there we go. And that's gonna go to the piano chord part, which is this guy. That'll repeat multiple times. And then the verse comes in and we do this thing. And then pedal the bass. Boom, 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 here it comes again. And that will eventually hit a, hit a, a shuffly bit. Yeah, this is a walk. A. And to your E. And A is coming again. Three, four. You could have put a walk in there too if you wanted. And now B, a big build up here. One, two, the release to the piano chords. And repeat, repeat. That's all there is to it. So a fun one, uh, quick and dirty, I realize, an acoustic version of Rocky Mountain Way. But I hope you'll have fun with that. It's a lot of fun to play with other people as well. You could have somebody playing lead fills in between all that and uh, really build it up. So thank you for coming back. I always enjoy doing this. And we'll see you again for another one very soon. There's a subscribe button going to appear over my head as a coffee cup, I think it is. And uh, I encourage you to do that so you know when other videos are coming up. Keep the comments coming and the suggestions. Glad to have them. Thanks again. Bye-bye now.